The best kept secret of the rich is what? Time management. What an incredible discovery I made one day when I found out that rich people have about 24 hours a day, right? And poor people have about what? 24 hours a day. Wouldn't that drive you mad till you found out what the difference was? How could you sleep nights till you found out what the difference was? Both have equal time, but an incredible difference in outcome. What makes the difference? Same time, but a totally different outcome. It's called time management. And here's part of it in a nutshell. Look for the few things that makes the most difference, then spend most of your time working on those few things. Here's why a lot of people don't do well. They major in minor things. They spend too much time on things that don't count. And what else? They spend too little time on things that would count. They've got the ratios mixed up. So we teach our children what? Don't spend major time on minor things, things that don't count. And don't spend major money on minor things, things that don't count. It's easy to get the ratios mixed up and suffer the consequences. In the last 10 years, a guy's bought two tons of donuts and two books. <laughs> and he wonders why his life is devastated. Right away, we would come up with the answer. Now, both donuts and books are okay, but this guy spent far too much money on donuts and not enough money on books. I'm telling you, that is the difference. The best kept secret of the rich. Don't spend too much money on things that don't count. Don't spend too much time on things that don't count. And don't spend too little time on things that would count. It's called the time management challenge. So the few things, the half dozen takes care of the big share of it. Good formula to use. Here's what we call these half dozen few basics. Basics, fundamentals. If you're going to play basketball, right, you're going to be a pro someday, hey, you've got, to, you've got to master the fundamentals. Not a thousand things, a few things you get very good at. Then you add your own flair and your own personality. But hey, if you want to do something extremely well and get well paid, you master the fundamentals and master the basics. Now, here's what's exciting about the fundamentals of life. Number one, there's just a few. There's not a thousand. There's just a few fundamentals of life and living well, success. Just a few fundamentals. Here's what else is exciting. Once you know them, you know them. Once you got it, you got it. And here's what else is exciting. There's no new ones. So you don't have to worry about being surprised. Because fundamentals are what? Old. Six and a half thousand years of written history gives us the fundamentals of life. And these fundamentals are old. You got to be aware of somebody who comes along with new truth and say, no, truth is not new. Truth is what? Old. Old. Now, there might be a new way of looking at it, maybe a new way to apply it to the 20th century. But just because you've discovered it, it isn't called new truth. So truth is old. Be aware of somebody says we've got a new fundamental. Say, no, that sentence doesn't even make sense. So be a little suspicious. This, this stuff's old. Let's maybe take a new look at it and see if we can understand a little more about it. But let's talk about some old stuff, some old fundamentals, right? Basics, major pieces of the life puzzle. How long written history of human life? Six and a half thousand years. So basic stuff, fundamental stuff. Now let's go through it. Here's number one. In fact, we might all agree on number one of the five major pieces to the life puzzle. Number one is philosophy. Philosophy. Our ability to establish a philosophy by using our mind, the ability to think, to process ideas and information. What an important function this is, using the mind, the ability to think, process ideas and information and establish our philosophy. Our philosophy that dictates our dreams for the future, objectives and purposes and goals, and a reasonable plan to get there in a reasonable amount of time, 
That's our philosophy. And this is what establishes our philosophy. And here's what's unique. Only human beings can do this. Only human beings can establish a philosophy. Reorder your life anytime you want to. Other life forms can't do it. Only human beings. A goose can only fly what direction in the winter? South. How come a goose has to go south in the winter? Because he's a goose. <laughs> can't go north. Can't go any other direction. Driven by what? Instinct and the genetic code. But see, that's not true of human beings. We're not just driven by instinct and the genetic code. Human beings can go north in the winter. We can go south. We can go east. We can go west. We can do anything we want to. We can tear up an old life script the last five years and design a whole new five years. Only human beings can do that. The only life form on earth that can do that. Establish a philosophy and change your life anytime you want to. Change your income anytime you want to. Change your circumstances anytime you want to. Change location anytime you want to. Change it all, do it all, go any direction. Only humans can do that of all life forms on earth. Now, what's important is to develop the ability to use all of these possibilities here to develop a more refined philosophy that will help you to order your life, pick up the values that you want, go for the treasures that are important to you. Philosophy. How important. Now, if you were to have asked me at age 25, if you would have if met me at age 25 and you would have said to me, Jim Rohn, how come you find yourself living in America here and yet you're in such an unfortunate position? Pennies in your pocket after working six years, nothing in the bank behind on your big mouth promises to your family. You live in America. You've been to at least one year of college. Wouldn't you legitimately have said to me, what's wrong here? If you would have asked me that question at age 25, it would never have occurred to me to blame my philosophy. That would never have occurred to me. I didn't know. And if you would have said, Jim Rohn, how come you find yourself in an unfortunate position here at age 25, embarrassed? I had a more of a tendency to blame the government. It's those Democrats. That... <laughs> I found that easier to blame than my philosophy. I used to blame interest rates. or I used to blame taxes. I used to say taxes are too what? High. High. Guess what the top tax rate was when I first started paying taxes? 91%. Top federal tax rate. Now the top federal tax rate is what? About 33%. But people are still saying what? Taxes are too... See, that old dog won't hunt, we say in Mississippi. How can you use that excuse? If the tax rate's gone from 91% down to 33, it can't be taxes while you find yourself in an unfortunate position. So I used to blame interest rates. I used to blame prices. I used to say things cost too much. You must be familiar with this old list. I used to blame the weather. I used to blame the traffic. I used to blame the company, company policy. I used to say, if this is all they pay, how do they expect you to do well by your family and save for the future and become financially independent? That's what I thought was wrong with my life at age 25, all this stuff out there. Then I found out that that was not it. Here's what I found out. All the stuff that I used to blame, we call the wind. And it is true. We all need a wind to take us somewhere. But here's where we want to finally arrive. We finally want to arrive where we've got treasures and we've got values, we've got productivity, and we've got success, we've got lifestyle, equities of all kinds, whatever makes life unique and worthwhile. Here's where we want to arrive. Now we've got a pretty good wind blowing in America, probably the best wind that's ever blown in six and a half thousand years of recorded history. I mean, it can't blow much better than it blows here. You say, well, then how come this wind is not blowing me to a good place? Well, you can't depend just on the wind. Here's what makes the difference, the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference is the set of the sail. And that's what I want to share with you today, the set of a new sail. That's what the sermon is for on Sunday morning. Help you set a better sail. That's what books are for. That's what learning is for. That's what school is for. So that this wind doesn't just blow you on the rocks, doesn't just blow you on the beach. It's true, some people do so little constructive thinking, they don't even have their sail up. So you can imagine where they're going to wind up, what? It's called disaster. But I'm telling you, if you do just a little constructive thinking, let your mind go to work 
on ideas and information, refine your philosophy and set a better sail, I'm telling you, you can get so good at this that after a while you could care less about the wind that blows. It will not frighten you anymore because now you've got the information. Now you've got a refined philosophy that's given you a firm footing, that's given you something to put up this sail so that regardless of the wind that blows, it takes you exactly where you want to go, where you want to arrive. And that's what made the difference for me. The set of the sail, the thinking process, the ability to come up with ideas and information, make your life unique and worthwhile. Now, what is philosophy? When I talk to kids about how to be rich and powerful, sophisticated and healthy and influential, once I get them sold on it, they say, okay, Mr. Owen, I'm ready. How do I do that? Here's what I tell them. It starts with your philosophy. <laughs> so now what do they ask me? What is philosophy? I mean, you know, that's a pretty big word, right, for some kids. So let me give you my definition of philosophy that I give to my teenage friends. Here's what our philosophy is. Number one, the sum total of all that we know. You just add up all you know. That's what helps to build your philosophy. And then here's number two. It's not just what you know. It's what you decide is valuable. Because you can't do all you know. If you know a thousand things, you can't do a thousand. So what do you have to do? You gather up the thousand ideas, then you got to sort through them. And do what? Decide which ones are valuable. If it's not valuable, hey, you don't waste your money. If it's not valuable, hey, you don't waste your time. But if it is valuable, you put in your money. If it is valuable, you what? Put in your time and effort, if it is valuable. Number one, we gather knowledge. Number two, we sort through it all and decide which is valuable, which isn't valuable. What not to waste your time doing, what to put your time to. Now that process establishes our philosophy. So now there's two parts to it. Here's number one. It's very important to know. You gotta know. It's what I tell my teenage friends every time I get a chance to talk to a high school class or a college class, university class. You gotta know. So pay attention to the information that's going on here at school. What you think of it, that's up to you. And what you're gonna do with it, that'll soon be up to you. But while you're here, make sure you get it. I got a good phrase for my teenage friends. Here it is. Don't leave school without it. I mean, you know, don't walk out of here without some stuff for your head to ponder and think about. I told the Newport Harbor high school kids, said they're nothing worse than being stupid. You got to know being broke is bad, but being stupid, that's what's really bad. <laughs> and what's really, really bad is being broke and stupid, right? I mean, <laughs> nothing much worse than that, unless you're sick, sick, broken, stupid, <laughs> about as far as you can fall. Well, there's probably one more. Ugly? <laughs> but hey, that would do it, wouldn't it? Ugly, sick, broken, stupid. Life's worst scenario. So you gotta know, you gotta have the information. So since that's true, let's correct a couple of old cliches. Here they are, let's correct them. What you don't know will hurt you. Just make that intelligent correction. What you don't know will hurt your bank account. If you don't know, what you don't know will hurt your health. What you don't know will hurt your future, leave you with an empty purse and an empty heart. What you don't know, ask a person who's 50 and broke. And just, you know, a few little questions. What you soon find out what? Nice guy, but he just doesn't know. No. So you gotta know. Here's another old cliche, let's correct this one. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is poverty. Ignorance is devastation. Ignorance is tragedy. Ignorance is illness. It all stems from ignorance. So you gotta know, you gotta have the information. Now, where do we get ideas and information that can help transform our life? Let's go through the information. Just take these notes. Here's number one, PE, personal experience. It's one way to pick up ideas from your own personal experience. One way to learn to do it right is what? Do it wrong. Now the key is don't let it take too long. 
If you've done it wrong 10 years, we suggest that's long enough. We don't suggest 10 more years just to prove a point. No. If you're broke at the end of 10 years, couldn't we evaluate that? Yes. I meet Mr. Shelf. I've been working six years. He said, Mr. Owen, you've been working six years. How are you doing? I said, not very well. He said, I suggest you not do that anymore. <laughs> are you going to go another six? Wouldn't you like the next six to be totally different than the last six? And I said, yes, sir. Then he said, we're going to find out, first of all, where you've messed up. We're going to change that so that the next six are totally different than the last six. And the reason human beings can do that is because they're human beings, not a goose, not a spider, not an alligator. Human beings can tear up the last six and develop a whole brand new six anytime you want to. I did it. If I did it, farm boy from Idaho raised in obscurity. There isn't anybody in this room that can't do it. So, number one, learn from your own experience. Here's number two, other people's experiences. That's why I'm here. I'm one of these other people. If I come along and share with you, no telling what I might save you from. You got to listen to other people. Save you a bankruptcy. Listen to somebody. Save you a divorce. Listen to somebody. Save you loss of a friendship. Listen to somebody. Save you a tragedy. Save you from falling out of the sky. Save you from a cardiovascular disaster. Save you. So other people can be so valuable. Now, the other people are divided into two categories. Here they are. Number one, failures. You got to listen to the failures. It's too bad failures don't give seminars. I'm telling you, be valuable. <laughs> A guy that's messed up his life for 40 years. You just got to say, John, would you spend a day with me? <laughs> I'll bring my journal. Take excellent notes. Tell me. Good looking guy like you. Got a beautiful family. Every reason for doing well. Threw it all away. Tell me how you messed up. <laughs> I'll take the notes. So here's the clue. Learn from negative as well as positive. Learn from failure as well as success. That's why the Bible is such a good book. I'm an amateur, but I'm telling you, it's a good book. Why? It's got a list of stories on both sides of the ledger, human stories. One list of human stories in the Bible is called examples. Do what these people did. Look how it worked out. And the other list is what? Warnings. <laughs> Warnings. Don't do what these clubs did. It's disaster. What a good book with two sets of stories on the positive and the negative side. So learn from failure as well as success. Find out what poor people read and don't read it. Find out how they talk and what. Don't talk that way. Find out the language they use and don't use it. Find out what they blame and get you a different list. I'm telling you, learn from failure. Learn from tragedy. Okay, now here's the other side. Learn from success. People have got something going of value that you could learn from. Whatever the value is. A mother who has magic with her children. Wouldn't you want to know? Of course. You say, Mary, would you meet me tomorrow morning for breakfast? Need a little cafe? You won't believe the service. I'll pick up the tab. She says, okay. She meets you tomorrow morning for breakfast. You say, Mary, I got to know. Where did you get this magic with your children? She says, well, to be honest with you, up until three years ago, my kids were out of control. And then I read this book. I went to this class and they gave me a little one, two, three program. And I've been using that now the last three years. And that's how come I got this magic with my children. Would that be a valuable breakfast? Would you pick up the tab? Of course. Here's what can save you so much heartache and put you on the road to wealth and power and success. And that is picking up the information from other people. Now, here's part of how you do it. Number one, observe, watch what's going on. Some people are doing it right and what? Some people are messing it up. Just watch what's happening during the day. Watch what's going on. Pay attention. Don't just stagger through the day. In leadership, we discuss most people are just trying to get through the day. Here's what wise people learn to do. Get from the day. Learn some lessons before the day is over by just watching what's going on. Here's number two, and that is to listen. You've got to become a good listener. Now, it is challenging listening well. 
Here's why. So many voices want our attention. How do you sort through all the voices today? I'm telling you, it's a challenge. Radio voices and television voices and religious voices and advertising voices and commercial voices, family voices, community voices, political voices, voices of all kinds. How do you sort through all that and not waste your time on voices that don't count? I'm telling you, it's a challenge. But you got to do like tuning in your radio. Tune out the static and tune out the shallow and tune out the silly. Find a voice of value. Stay for a while. Keep tuning. Find a voice of value. Stay for a while. That's the clue. On Sunday morning, we ask you to come and what? Stay for a while. Listen to a voice of value. We ask you to come to a seminar and what? Stay for a while. When your hands are busy and your mind is free, turn your car into a mobile classroom and just stay for a while listening to someone that has something valuable to share. The skill of selective listening. Don't spend most of your time on voices that don't count. Going to add too little worth to your future. Don't waste your time on the shallow and the silly. You don't have to walk on fire. I'm telling you, you don't. You don't have to do something spectacular. There's some simple, easy, basic reasons why people like I at age 25 am broke, not destitute, but broke, pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank, way behind on my big mouth promises, not doing well, wondering wh what went wrong. It's too easy to figure out what went wrong. And then it's too easy to change it, to fool with all the spooky nonsense that's going on today. So just pass on all that. Just some good, basic, fundamental, solid stuff that kids can understand, right? Kids don't need their own private psychic, you know, to try to help them figure out the future. This stuff's too easy. Getting rich is too easy. I got rich by the time I was 31. Here's the best advice I give my teenage friends. It was easy. What can I tell you? It was hard. No, it was easy. I'm a millionaire by 31. Let me tell you how I did it. I got three reasons why I got rich by the time I was 31. Let me give you those. Here's number one. I lived in America. I mean, how lucky can you get? America's easy. That's why everybody wants to come here. People haven't plotted and schemed for 50 years saying if I could just get to Poland, everything would be okay. <laughs> no. No. The boat people are not desperately trying to get to Vietnam. No. They're not squeezing through the fence to try to get into Mexico. No. Everybody wants to come here by every means possible to get here. Why? Because America's easy. Bangladesh is hard. Cambodia would be hard. The Khmer Rouge killed two million Cambodians to make communism work. That's hard. America is easy. I got rich by the time I was 31. I lived in America. America's easy. Now, here's number two. I found an opportunity. That's all you got to do in America. Search for an opportunity. Take the first one, right? Try it. If that isn't it, it leads to another. One door closes, another door opens. This is what's exciting about America. It's full of opportunity. A chance to try and then what? Try again and then what? Try again, never, never run out of opportunity to try. See if you can't better your life and your health and your future and your bank account and your income. Make your fortune here. Here's number three. I found a teacher. What a grand and glorious, unique thing that was for me at that time in my life. I found a teacher willing to teach me. And his teaching came in two parts. Here's what it was. Very simple. Number one, Mr. Ron, you have evidently messed up <laughs> between ages 19 and 25. Now, I could understand that, but he didn't leave me there. He said, now, here's the answers on how to change it all the next six years so that the next six years won't be like the last six. What an incredible teacher taught me how to have a whole brand new six years. First six, what? I messed up. Second six, what? I got it right. Second six years, I became a millionaire. During that second six years, the government was about the same. I'm telling you. Interest rates were about what? The same. The pay scale was about what? The same. Lord knows my negative realities were the same. Circumstances were about the same. The economy was about the same. The unions and their philosophy was about the same. What was going on around me was about the same. Then how come I got rich that second six years? I was not the same. I changed. I invite you on that journey. Anytime you want to, 
You can stay the same so that the next six years will be like the last six. Take a look at the last six years. And I'm telling you, the next six years of your life is going to be like the last six. Unless you change. Or unless you want to count on this short list that we call not much list. Most everybody's counting on this not much list. What if all of your negative relatives turn positive? What would that do for your future and your fortune? What? Not much. Not much. What if prices came down a little? What will that do for your future? I'm telling you, not much. If the economy gets a little better, what will that do? Not much. Now that the Democrats are in power, what's that going to do for your future? Not much. Uh, not much. We, got it. we could get a good debate going here. <laughs> if the Republicans would have stayed in power, what would that have done? <laughs> not much. Hey, we could get a good debate going here. I'm telling you, it's a not much list. If you don't make plans of your own, guess what? You'll probably always fit into someone else's plans. Guess what someone else may have planned for you? <laughs> then what's going to make the difference? You're going to have to make the difference. You're going to have to take charge. Now, Mr. Schoff, my teacher gave me a promise, and I want to give you that promise now. Here was the promise I got, and I bring it to you. Here's what my teacher said. If you will change... Mr. Rohn, he said, if you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change the government. You don't have to change prices. You don't have to change taxes. He said, if you will change, everything will change for you. And the first thing you start changing is what? Your philosophy. You start changing your mind. You start changing how you think. You start picking up new ideas and information. Gather new knowledge. Make better decisions about what's valuable. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that, your whole life will change. Your health will change. Your relationship with your family will change. Your ability to cope with challenges and problems will change. I'm telling you, income, promotions, all of it will change. If you will change, it'll all change. If you won't change, it isn't going to change. You can keep your fingers crossed if you want to and hope they'll straighten it out. You can wish for the wind not to blow quite as severe, but I'm telling you, wishing for the wind to change in your favor, we call naive at best. Don't do this any longer. Wish for a better wind. The key is to wish for the wisdom to set a better sail. Utilize whatever wind that blows to take you wherever you want to go. That is the philosophy I picked up at age 25, and it revolutionized my whole life. And here's what I found. I found it was easy. I got rich by the time I was 31 and it was easy. Now here's my definition of easy. My definition of easy, meaning something I could do. I figure if it's something you can do, it's easy. Now here's a parenthesis. Parenthesis, I worked hard at it. I found something I could do which was easy, but I worked hard at it. I got up early and stayed up late, worked hard that six years. But what I did was easy, meaning it was something I could do. You say, well, Mr. Ron, if it was so easy, how come everybody else around you during that six years, how come they didn't get rich? Here's why. It's easy not to. <laughs> how else would you describe it? That's it. You say, no, no. For all of the rest of them, it was hard for them and it was easy for you. That's not true. But here's the challenge. Let me give it to you in a philosophical phrase. I tend to be a little philosophical. Here it is. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. So you've got the choice here today of one of two easies. Easy to or what? Easy not to. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. Here it is in one sentence. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do every day for six years. Underline. I did not neglect. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune and I did not neglect to do it. Major reason for not having everything you want in America. Major reasons for not having more of what you want in America. More health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything. Major reason why you don't get it. Simple answer. Neglect. And here's the problem with neglect. It starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And here's what else is the problem. One neglect leads to another. Neglect to do wise things with your money, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your time. Neglect to do wise things with your time, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your business. 
One leads to another leads to another. Pretty soon, neglect has you by the throat, emptying your purse, emptying your heart, emptying all of your chances for equities and power and all the good things. Neglect. What if you should be walking around the block every day for your good health and you don't? I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. You should do it. You could do it. You don't do it. That's called formula for disaster. All you've got to do is let that and a few other things accumulate for six years. And now you're driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, doing what you don't want to do. Maybe having become what you really didn't want to become. I'm telling you, that's it. Just neglect along, drift along, and it's got you by the throat. It'll take all your values, leave you with just a little bit of dust in a summer wind, and it'll soon be gone. I hope I said that well. That's it. It's where I found myself at age 25 until my teacher came along and said, Mr. Owen, up till now you've messed up. Let's see if we can't clean that up, change it all. I did. Change my life. Not just the money, all the rest of the values that came pouring in when I understood that it was me. It was me. So take the easy approach.